Hello everybody, good evening. Oh, just hit my light there. How is everybody? I'm excited about this one because I haven't actually done a live with a makeup artist for a while and this one is a special one because this is Monica Blunder, who, um, it was very interesting. Hello, Monica, come and join me. Um, who's very interesting because she, she overheard or her team overheard loads of makeup artists raving about how amazing her products are. And um, where can I add you? You're going to request to join for me. And, um, and basically said, do you want me to come on and talk about it? And all her other top 10 beauty buys as well. And I've got the, a new launch from her here, which we're going to talk about, which is actually skincare. So where are you, Monica? Come and join me. request thank you very much for saying my hair looks amazing can I just say it's all started breaking off again and I've no idea why come on Monica let's join let's let's ask you to join that'll be easier won't it there you go there you go I'm inviting you in now and join me as I was saying I was interviewing Kay Montano I think it was and every good evening well good morning <laughs> Uh, hi Nadine. Good morning. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> well, it's it's dark here because we're in London and it's five o'clock, but it's obviously nine o'clock in the morning where you are. It's five o'clock. That means it's time for a glass of wine <laughs> or a cocktail. Um, a cocktail. Margarita. Margarita. I was it's just saying that um, over the last few months, I've been doing these ten out of tens, and every time. I interview a professional makeup artist, they go crazy for your product. It's been so well received in the UK. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of it. And I'm so happy that other makeup artists like it as well, because, you know, launching a product is, especially as a makeup artist, it's kind of daunting because I feel like more eyes are on you and everyone is expecting even a little bit more. So it was, uh, it was definitely a little bit nerve wracking to, to launch my first product, but I'm so proud of it because I just love it. That's all I use now. I use it on all my clients at work. I don't use liquid foundation anymore. So I'm very excited to chat with you today about it. So it's very interesting. So, um, I, I've had some really honest, open conversations with professional makeup artists about it. Makeup artists tend to love cream and balm foundations. And there are secrets on how to, and I've been following you and watching your tutorials. There are secrets on how to get the best of it because once your color match to your right color, you can use it with the right skincare to sheer it out for a tinted look. You can use it to create a demi matte finish, a complete matte finish, a glowy finish as a concealer. It's a sort of one stop shop product, isn't it? It is, and I think that's what we love as makeup artists because first of all, you know, we go to work with a little kit, so we can't bring, you know, a million different foundations with us. So we usually use products that are foolproof and that really work. And with, like you just explained, with like a creamy, balmy texture, you can do so many different things. So that's what's so important about Blanda Cover that you really have to educate the, I call her the everyday woman, the consumer woman, because she is not taught really how to to professionally apply makeup so and that's what's so wonderful about blender cover that it can really do so many different things so you can just use it as a concealer you can shear it out and make it look like a very natural sort of finish you can use it in your t-zone you can pinpoint conceal certain areas you can use it as a base on your eyes so um it's it's wonderful and, and that's sort of how i work as a makeup artist on set i just have you know, a small range of, of foundations with me and now Blender Cover and, I, and I'm super proud of the shades. I mean, we launched a year ago in December, exactly a year ago. And, you know, we launched with seven shades, which wasn't that many, but again, I wanna mention that we are self-funded uh, brand. We don't have any outside investment. And also what's so nice about Blender Cover is that it's very sheer and adaptable. So I can really be two, three different shades and so it's not the kind of product that needs 50 shades. Um, I'm very proud to say that we're launching seven more in a week. So we are at 20 shades. And I think it's a very good number for that particular product. 
I so, agree because I think I'm anything between a four, a four and a half, or a five. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I oh. quite. I mean, I quite like adding a little bit of warmth to my face as well. But I agree with you completely. I can use any one of those three shades. So, Definitely. and congratulations on the shade extension to twenty. Um, Thank you. Tell me how you came up with the name. Who came up with that? Because it's a really clever play on your na your name as well. And were you inspired by some of the classic? cream balm iconic foundations i mean most makeup artists i know are absolutely obsessed with the bobby brown sticks she was the first lady to revolutionize i, love I, know. I, love, I she's know. the first lady to revolutionize how we really apply is. foundation and to teach us properly how to use foundation and i'm guessing you're the new generate i like to think of you as the new generation bobby brown i do love bobby brown i've always been such a big fan of hers and i think she's like a power woman and she's mm -hmm. such an inspiration and uh i love hers i really love clay I, I was contracted with clay for many years so i worked with them and i was always the biggest fan of their stick uh for, uh, for uh, concealer so that was like a very beautiful product it's still to this day up in my in my makeup kit and then i also love tom ford tom ford has really wonderful and a lot of makeup artists use the tom ford sticks Created by makeup artists. Created by a makeup artist, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, those 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 are my my favorites. Um, and I wanted to. I know that you are not like you know super into clean makeup, uh, or I've heard you talk about it. But I, for me, it was important, and I, I understand because it's such a trend right now, and everyone talks about clean clean makeup. And for me, it was really more that because I work with so many women, and I in most there's so many women that have allergic reactions to certain products they don't like when uh, products have perfumey ingredients so and also my upbringing you know I grew up in Austria in a very small town in a mountain town you are from London so you probably know I'm really close to Kitzbühel which is a very famous ski resort and I grew up just very natural you know I grew up as I have to tell you I'm a hundred percent I've got very very sensitive skin around my nose and down here I suffer from dermatitis so I like all my skincare and if if possible my makeup to be unfragrant so I'm with you on that I'm, and I'm especially seeing as your products will touch so many different skins through the course of your career you've kind of always got to err on the side of sensitive creating for sensitive skins haven't you yeah, it, it really is. And it's really interesting to see uh, because I get to work with so many different women and uh, what, you know, so that really helped me developing a product that I kind of knew what women like and what they don't like. And also what really helped me uh, being contracted with such an amazing company like Clé de Peau because they sent me out, you know, to all the department stores all over America, I went to Neiman Marcus, Nordstrom's, all these beautiful stores where I got to spend a day with the everyday woman consumer, you know, to kind of like teach her how to do makeup. So I always kind of learned what they're looking for. So um, that was super helpful. And another thing as a makeup artist, you know, we we like like the no fuss type of product and and i know that i'm sorry my phone is ringing i'm so sorry i forgot to turn this off i'm in my <laughs> living room um another thing is you know because everything is like uh you know marketed so like everyone loves to like oh it has spf in it it has this in it and like we as makeup artists we actually don't like working with foundation with spf because the spf sometimes can really manipulate the formulation and also the color. What yes. happens a lot if SPF is in a foundation, it can deoxidize your skin color. So we like to do our SPF separately, but the consumer is taught, you know, to buy everything with SPF and everything is overloaded with SPF, like your foundation and this, just put your regular SPF on. That's all you need to do. You know what I mean? So, um, I, oh, no, I, I mean, I absolutely agree. I think, I think SPF and foundation is a sort of a lazy all in one step, but as a professional makeup artist, I think you want multifunction products that are suitable for multiple different types of skin. And right. some people like different SPFs as well. So, and some SPFs go ashy on some skin types. So uh, yeah. Okay. I think Tell me how you came up with the name. Oh, okay. So, um, so a lot of people don't actually know what a blunder means, but a blunder 
is a mistake. Yeah. So I hated my last name for so many years. Monica, my name is Baggett, trust me. I had the <laughs> Mickey taken out of me so much growing up. But you we can, you can say like forgot school. or something. It sounds French at least, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> but so I was actually with a very famous uh, celebrity and actress and she was like, Monica, you have the best name. First of all, Monica is spelled with a K, which is very unusual, especially here in America. Everyone is with a C. And then Blunder, she's like, there's no really blood. Like, look it up. How many are there? So if you ever come up with a product, it's going to be towards your advantage. And uh, and I just wanted to do a little spin with my last name. So a blunder is a mistake. And blunder cover is like you're covering your little blunders, your little mistakes. No, so. it's, uh, it's the best use <laughs> of a makeup artist and brand founder's name ever. I absolutely <laughs> love it. And well, three cheers to whoever, whoever that celebrity was, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, well, if if you say that, Nadine, I, I, I take it because I want to also really quickly point on how I found you or how I you know discovered you. I, I used to have this amazing assistant who doesn't work for me anymore. And she was like very kind of snobbish about products. And she actually was very educated about products. She knew everything. And she was like, have you ever heard of this lady Nadine uh, Bagot from London? And I said, no, I don't know. I don't know her. So like she showed me your Instagram and everything. And then I like was obsessed with you. And from that day on, I started following you. Do you know, so. I interviewed you because for 18 years, I was the beauty editor of Hello Magazine and I interviewed you via Claire de Po, I believe it was Claire de Po, because I used to have to do red carpet makeup and you're the queen, well one of the queens of red carpet makeup I was saying earlier on in an intro, I mean you've been working, re I mean you work with some amazing actresses but you're working recently with Gemma Chan who's one of, I mean, I mean talking about gilding a lily it's the most beautiful, she has the most beautiful face so yeah. if you do, who everybody's watching now if you don't follow monica i'll tag her below but follow her and, and see her work it's really really beautiful um, and you know what's so beautiful about uh, Gemma too I, I a lot of the ladies i work with i meet them before they're actually super famous and then it's really nice when you meet them i met her right before um Crazy Rich, Asian, uh, Crazy Rich Asian came out and my agent was like, there's this new girl, go. And, you know, I did like a quick makeup for her and then we just bonded and connected. And then she hired me for everything else. But it's so wonderful to see when someone like Gemma just blew up. And I mean, her career is just, yeah. and the face, I mean, the face and, of an angel. She's just and so, so stylish. Like she's you just so look at her face like this. She's yeah. just so beautiful and so stylish. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, yeah. So obviously your product number one is obviously going to be Blunder Cover. 20 um, shades now. Um, tell my followers how they're going to get color matched because I saw some questions coming in on the yeah. best way to get color matched. Absolutely. So and that was really kind of uh, nerve wracking, you know, launching in COVID last year and everything was just online. I was like, how am I going to be able to sell a foundation online? So we just try to make it as easy for the consumer as possible. So we have a shade matching tool on Call Beauty and on my website, Monica Blunder Beauty. And also another thing we do is we if someone is really unclear, because on my website, I feel like we made it very clear. We have models which match the shade and then you can kind of look at the model and see if you, you know, look sort of similar to her skin color. And if you still, and also we describe each shade, we really go down in the undercovers yes. on, and on the, you know, we tell the you the pink, yeah. the undertones, the undercovers, the undertones and, and what kind of um, undertones are in the shade. If it's still unclear to you, then you can DM us at uh, Monica Blunder Beauty on Instagram and me and my team, we will shade match you. Uh, what you would need to do is just send a selfie of yourself, but send a selfie without makeup. Some people send selfies with like, makeup on and they're underneath the light and I'm like oh, so take your makeup down and then we'll help you. The reason that the Monica Blunder Beauty team are asking you to DM is because if they want to see your selfies they can just look at your Instagram they need to see your skin in daylight without makeup and then they can color match you that's that's brilliant that's really good so that's your product number one um what's happening with Blunder Cover are you going to launch more shades or are you leaving it at the core 20 now? I'm going to leave it at 20 at the moment. And then what's so nice to see is if there's really a need 
for like another shade. And because I'm a makeup artist and I have all my shades in a palette in my kit. And when I go and work, I, you know, I can test everything out and see what works and what doesn't. And if I feel like there's something missing, I can always add to, to the shades next year. Um, but we do have some really exciting launches next year. Um, we have actually quite a lot of stuff coming. I have a beautiful lipstick uh, range coming, um, a cream blusher. We have a lip balm coming and then a gorgeous moisturizer, which I am so excited about. I heard you got it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was allowed to mention it. Yes, and, and I and I love the name. I hope you like the name. It kind of goes with uh, Blender Cover. I love it. It's, so it's called Undercover Face Cream, and I wasn't sure if I was allowed to mention it. So I had it here just in case. Now, if you follow Monica, she explains that Blunder Cover will only work for you if you prep your skin properly. And I know this sounds like it might just be Monica. Every makeup artist I've ever, ever interviewed says that the key to great makeup is to prep your skin. And so she's talking about oils and serums and, and things like that to give it slip. So tell me why you created this. Let's, if we can, let's have this as product number two and tell me what's so special about this. So first of all, I wanted to create a product or especially my face cream in Europe. So I found a wonderful lab in Germany. So I'm super proud to say that it's made in Germany. Um, Blender Cover is made here in California. And uh, I didn't want to call it a primer because I feel like a primer is sort of like outdated, the word. And um, primers a lot of times have a lot of silicone in it. And the silicone, um, you know, it's, 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 it's great at the beginning, but then it's I, just... I have on a your... terrible problem with, with film forming silicones. They peel yeah. terribly on me. I agree. But right? this is an... Um, okay, describe this texture to me because this is amazing. Yeah, it, so it goes on as a rich gel cream. Yeah, then it so my inspiration into, it my turns into a, a richness, but then it's got a sort of flattering demi matte soft focus finish. Yeah, so th so my inspiration for this product was so one product I have in my makeup kit since twenty years is. Uh, Embryolis. Do you know Embryolis? Yes. And of again, that's like a makeup artist dream product. I, 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 I learned with this. It's still in my kit. I love it. But you know, let's face it, it it's not the cleanest product. It also has a very a heavy scent to it again some yeah. women don't like the scent so but the inspiration behind undercover was was embryolis and i wanted to create a product that really works in every single uh skin type so it couldn't be too rich you know what i mean because some people really can't handle too heavy of a moisturizer mm -hmm. and it's just um, the inspiration behind it again just something really beautiful that you can put under under your makeup i'm not giving you any promises with this uh, uh moisturizer it's not going to take your wrinkles away i'm not calling it anti-aging or any of that it's just a wonderful product that you put on under your makeup and i think it's also like my husband uh you know in my house when i uh create the products i'm giving it to my daughter to my son to my husband just for everyone to get some feedback and actually the boys in my house really love it as well so it's really nice to create something that is actually sort of unisex as well has it got something in it that gives it a soft focus finish or is that literally just the, the emollients and the humectants it's amazing it's, yeah it's the emollient of it exactly it's really beautiful, isn't it? It's really, really beautiful. I love it. And I'm, and I'm like you, I prefer unfragrant skincare. And with a moisturizer, I don't actually expect it to, to perform miracles because I use a retinol at night and a vitamin C. I just want it to hydrate my skin, plump out superficial fine lines temporarily, give a nice soft focus finish and be a, the perfect base for a foundation. You've done it's it. It's you should be really proud of that. It's beautiful. That's it's really nice. So funny what you just said too. That's exactly what I do because I do love my serums. I do love my retinol, and I do. And and you can use all of that underneath the moisturizer, and and yeah. you can do this, your SPF. So, um, you know, and keeping it simple too, right? I don't like to use too many things on myself. No, I think most women are too busy to use too many things as well. Yeah. So I will give a nod to Embryo Lease as well, but what's your next product? Oh, when is that launching here in the UK? 
So we are launching it earlier in Europe because it is made in Europe. So I think you guys are, we're launching it in London or in Europe around uh, January or late January. Okay, I'll say coming January. So it's called Undercover Face Cream, Monica Blonder Undercover Face Cream. So it's going to be yeah. on monicablonder.com and on Cult Beauty in the UK as well. Well, within Europe as well. Next product, Monica. Um, I, 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 I noticed this morning when I pulled the products, I was like, well, I'm a makeup artist and I pulled quite a lot of skincare products. So I'm really sorry about that. I haven't even thought of this. But you know, with I, me as a makeup artist, I get so much product sent. And I, I'm really not that, um, uh, you know, I, I'm fine, like not that loyal to everything. I like to switch it out and, and try new things. But with my skincare, I'm quite loyal. So the other uh, product I recommended, and I don't know if you're familiar with this brand called Caras Carasoin. And she, I think they're also English, but they have a, a, a face spa here in Los Angeles. And it no, is- No, I don't know them. Oh my God, I'm dying for you to try this product. It's, 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 it's organic. So I put mine in the refrigerator and it only has, I have to put on my glasses to read off what it has in it. But it is, so it's a, a cold pressed organic uh, moisturizer and it has all organic ingredients. And the first ingredient is shea butter. It has um, jojoba oil, rosehip oil, camilla, um, uh, sea foam, pumpkin seed. I mean, it's just gorgeous because most uh, moisturizers, the first ingredient is water. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yes. Um, the bigger brands. So this is just, it's like the real deal. And it's so, it smells. If I could just let you smell this right now, it's gorgeous. It, it smells like um, orange peel. You how, know? How, what, how do I spell the name of that, Monica? Uh, C A R. A-S-O-I-N. Okay. Carasoin. And it's called a fusion uh, moisturizer. Cold pressed organic moisturizer. Brilliant. Also, yeah. that is very different to yours. Thank you, sir. Linda. Lin Thank you, Linda. Look who's watching. Who's oh, Linda. Carasoin. <laughs> Thank you. You see, Linda's the person to ask when it comes to when things are launching in the UK, because Linda will know, because Linda will be the one working on behalf of Monica in London. Um, what's Perfect. next, Monica? And the, I did do the Agustina Spader. I know that this is such a trendy. Uh, it really is. Tell me why you love it so much, because it's the rich one you like, isn't it? You know what? I like it, but you know who likes it is all the people I put it on. Yes. Every single woman is obsessed with this product. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with this brand, what they have done in such a short time. Because I see so many launches, you know, I see so many products that, that come in and they come out. But whatever they have done, those two, it's I think it's Augustinos and his partner. I've, I've met both of them at an event. It's, it's mind boggling, like it's crazy how they have exploded in such a short period of time. And I think in order to do that, your product has to be good, right? Like, I don't think that you can just explode in it's that a, way. It's a really clever blend of, it's, it's a gel cream moisturizer. And even the rich one isn't that rich, by the way, for anybody who hasn't tested it. It's a combination of a whole host of peptides that boost motor function in the skin. And it's got stem cells in it as well. And I think what's really interesting about um, the founders of Augusta, Augustina Spader is um, they, spe they specialize in he, uh, treating wounds and treating severe burns. Yeah. And that's where he's learned what peptides work within the skin to boost um, cell function as well. So I do think it's an interesting brand. I really yeah, do. And like you say, it's quite expensive. And sometimes I hate to promote products that are super, super expensive. You literally but, took the words out of my mouth. The only thing I've got against it is that it's so expensive. It's so expensive. And, and, I, and, and I really try not to promote things which are over a certain amount. But this is, it, it is, it is a very, it's a very unique product. And, and I like that it doesn't have a scent and it gives you that gorgeous glow and it works really beautiful on the makeup. So and you're the it, same as me. The people I know who love it, they are obsessed. Yeah. obsessed with it there was a reason that victoria beckham did her skincare with them trust me she, she really did exactly yeah. and kudos to them again on on how beautifully they have just you know expanded their brand in such a short period of time mm -hmm. so 
It's really nice. Um, and then my next one is, you know, an oldie but goodie. But I think that's, again, every makeup artist in the world has this product. It's a Bioderma. Everyone I turn this product on to my girlfriends who are not makeup artists and they've never heard of it. They text me. They're like, where has this product been in my life? Because I just love how gentle it is. It takes your makeup off so easy and i have this in my makeup kit so when i do someone's makeup and like something you know falls down and i do the eye makeup you can just clean it up with it and it's just wonderful do you know it's really interesting isn't it i think it's how your european sensibility but some of your classic beauty buys that you love are sort of what i would call french pharmacy brands and yeah. you know when we all used to land in paris you sort of exactly. you were a trainee makeup artist we all used to dive on the French pharmacies and pick up those French. And to this day, I'm still loyal to so many of those French pharmacies. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Exactly. That's, I mean, you and I are so similar in that, in that way. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Um, it, it's yeah. interesting, isn't it? I think if you, it's a bit, if anybody's watching this from the States, it, you might be sort of, it, it will be the equivalent of me landing in America and going to um, one of the American high street sort of, you know, pharmacies and just picking up all those brands that's what we used to be like when we used to land in paris back in the day we'd come over for paris fashion week and the first thing we do is go to a big pharmacy and choose all those and that's how you discover things like embryolis as well exactly yeah. and, and now you can buy everything on amazon but i literally remember the days when i would go because i go home once a year to see my family i would go home bring an extra suitcase <laughs> and buy you know all the products that i wasn't able to get here in the states so people and because it's a global market now and everything is available on amazon and you're right linda land we would all land and rush to walgreens or cbs and we just have a special place in our suitcase to put all the things that we couldn't get all the american brands that we couldn't get well that's the equivalent of the french pharmacy we there all was, used to do it there was still something really special about that wasn't it when you weren't able to get everything right away you know when you were like you had a friend going to germany for me and i'm like can you pick this up for me or a friend going to paris and now everything's which is great but it's also like you know that it, do, like, it doesn't have the same covetable feeling do you remember how much yeah. you fight over a, a tube of embryolis would be like oh, oh or biafine it would be like oh my goodness <laughs> exactly <laughs> Exactly. Right. What's your next product? Uh, I did another quite pricey one, uh, but you know, I this is like my my absolutely favorite serum, and I don't use this every single day because I don't want my skin to get too used to it. It's the firming serum, and and the way the only way how I could describe this product is do you know spanks when you put on spanks for your uh, you know this is kind of like a spanks for your face it just like really tightens everything and i love it on a day when i'm like maybe a little bit tired or i traveled or i had a few too many glasses of wine the night before and i need to look good the next day i put this on because it just really I feel like it fills up my little fine lines and uh, it's a wonderful product. And, and what brand is that? You didn't say the full name. Sorry. Oh, sorry. It's, it's Cladipo. Cladipo. I mean, I have to say most makeup artists absolutely adore Cladipo. It's getting increasingly yeah. hard to get in the UK as well, which I think is such a pity. I heard that it's quite hard mm. to get in, in the UK, yeah. Um, I, they're just a wonderful brand and, and I've worked with them over the years and they're just so loyal and, and everything they bring out is just a classic, you know, product. Uh, That's going to be one of those products that will be worth getting on Eurostar and going over to Paris for, it really will. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, think it, I, think it might, I think it might be available at Harrods. I think Harrods have a a huge Claire de Pose stand, but you really have to hunt it down now. So I'll find out where it's stocked and I'll, I'll credit it here. So that's just called the Claire de Pose Firming Serum, is it? It's called the Firming Serum. And again, it's also made in Japan, which I love skincare made in Asia, especially Japan and Korea. I feel like, um, you know, some of the labs, because now I am in the development world as well. Some of the labs are just, they're like five years ahead with technology. Yes. So... Uh, when I do spend money on skincare in that sort of price range, I, I really do my, my research and it, I... It's, it's really interesting following on from what we were saying about when we used to land and go to CVS or Walgreens or we'd go to a French pharmacy. That's what we're like now if we land in Tokyo or we land in Seoul in Korea. It's like what's new and hot and happening coming out of Japan and Korea because 
in terms of hyaluronic acid and their serum technology and their SPFs moniker are just, they're so good. That's why Shiseido is so rich because do you know that they, they're the ones who uh, uh, created hyaluronic, like hyaluronic. Yeah. I know. They're, it's I know. Insane. And again, we can't get Shiseido in the UK anymore. And my best mate used to do the PR for Shiseido and it's, she gets oh. it all sent like, straight over from japan now but absolutely well, I'm, amazing I'm gonna product. i'm gonna tell clay to send you some i okay. i have i have a few friends there wink wink <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you mina claire de poe is on cult beauty as well but yes thank you claire de poe i'd appreciate it yeah that. i yes. need spanks for my face most days thank you monica i'm What's going next? to have i'm gonna have them send it to you um okay i have two more uh skincare products and then we go to makeup um one product is a makeup artist what you know because when we do red carpet events so many times i do an actress and then they go to the red carpet many times they wear dresses and they expose a lot of their skin and i i don't i'm not a big um self tan person because a lot of times the product turns out orange or the spray tan i it's such an LA thing, women spray tan, and I hate it. Maybe it's because I'm European. I like it more natural, and I hate that orangey glow women get. But there is a product by Vita Liberata, and I think it's an English Body brand, glow. isn't it? It's amazing. I know the founder of that brand. That product is utterly and completely yeah. unique. Explain and I remember what you the love first about time. it, Monica. The first Amazing. time I showed this, the first time I showed this to Megan Fox because she likes body products, and I put it on her. She's like, "What is that?" <laughs> so she ordered it for herself too. But it's amazing. It it almost gives you like you know when you're wearing stockings on your legs and you just get that like sucked in sort of look and everything. It's just, just got this perfect. soft focus hint of a tint. It and, yeah. it, and it it gives it just enough cover and color to hide like a little shaving nick or an insect bite or a sort of capillary or something like that. But it yeah. doesn't look like makeup. It's your skin it on its go, best day. It doesn't go on your clothes too. So you put it mm. on. What I usually do is I put it on the client. I usually wear like little, you know, those thin gloves because mm -hmm. it does kind of go on your hands and everything. And then I, uh, and then you let it dry for like five minutes. Maybe I'll they'll go back into their robe. And then when they put on their clothes, it doesn't stain, which is really nice. It's uh, such, I, such clever product. Yeah. And then I show you the other, that's why I chose this product on top of it. It's a Tom Ford product. It's the Soleil Blanc. So because this is a cream and it gives you color, this gives you like that gorgeous sheen, that shine, that little shimmer. You know, when you see like an actor going, you're like, why are they so shiny and shimmery and gorgeous? listening so that's usually what i use it's and it's so smells. beautiful on shoulders and here and down the front of a leg it's, as well to get that exact shape. i love it on the shoulder right here what you just pointed out because you don't have to put it everywhere you can just put it on the collarbone a little bit on your arms it's gorgeous and it smells so beautiful you don't even need to wear perfume heavenly afterwards. it smells beautiful yeah. yeah great and then i have um i chose um an eyeliner because I've tested out probably every single eyeliner on the market and the one I personally love as a liquid liner again created by a makeup artist is Surat Beauty yes. um, S-U-R-R-A-T Beauty and I the reason why I like it is just it's it has a it's like a pen so it has refillable cartilage in the back and it's just the finest tip uh, imaginable and so easy to just draw on that perfect, sharp, crisp um, liquid line, if that's something you like. But, you know, most women like a liquid liner and I just love this one. Those, the one that, I, use. I mean, those Surat products, again, are another beauty insider, makeup artist, hero set of products. They absolutely love them. And Troy Surat is just such a nice man. He really is. Is yeah. it true? Seeing as you're now in the process of creating more color cosmetics and sourcing the best places in the world, I heard a rumor once that all good 
eyeliners, pencil eyeliners, eyeliners come from Germany. Is that true? Yeah, I'm actually working with uh, one of the labs now too, because for 2023, I'm already working on eye products. But yeah, there is a brand, there's a company in Germany. Uh, they produce in Germany and I think also uh, uh, Poland or Hungary. Uh, they have another factory there. But yeah, all the good eyeliners are made in Germany. Yeah. It's like all the good hyaluronic acids come out of Japan and South Korea. It's very, very interesting. Yeah, in Italy, think... Italy has some really good labs too. Yes. Very good. So I'm um, working with one for my mascara there. I, I don't know about mascara, but I know in terms of pressed pigment eyeshadows. Uh, eyeshadows the, too. The famous Italian lab that yep. makes all of Tom Ford Pat and McGrath Charlotte and all. Yeah, yeah. very good. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> fascinating. It's fascinating. We have to get together when you come over to London. We'll have to get together over cocktails and have a good gossip about the best. Because you must be, you're at the coal face now. You're literally finding the best manufacturers and producers of all the best products, aren't you? Oh, it's yeah. so interesting getting into that world and learning because it's such a secretive thing. I'm telling you, no one tells you where the labs are. It's unbelievable. I'm like, why are people being so stingy about it? <laughs> it's really interesting as well. I think, I think brands, some of the really big brands like you to think that they ma manufacture their own products because they don't like to think that their products are coming from the same lab or the same factory as other products. But they're completely different production runs. But there are certain labs that just do great eyeliner, certain labs that do great mascara, certain labs that just do great. Those foil sort of Charlotte Tilbury, Tom Ford shadows. Amazing. When, and the Pat McGrath ones where you rub your fingers oh. across. And nobody could do that foil for years. And there is one place in Italy that does that foil better than That's anybody it. else. Tom yeah. Ford, they're all exactly. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Right, right. next product. Okay. And then I, I am a huge the reason why I chose this is because I wanted to talk about lip liners in general. This is my personal, absolutely. I mean, when you watch some of my tutorials, I probably use this in almost every tutorial. It's the Shantikai Natural. This is just a color I personally love because it's very universal. It's not too dark. When you use a lip liner, you don't want it to be too dark because it's harsh, right? And this is just like the perfect lip color. It's like that nudey, pinky, peachy sort of color. And I love the texture. It's not too hard because if a lip liner is too hard, then it doesn't, you know, it's just... It, it needs to have a little softness to it. So yes. The texture of this product is amazing. And the reason why, like, it's funny. There's makeup artists who absolutely hate lip liners. I remember when I used to assist and started out uh, as a makeup artist, there, there were certain, like, never use a lip liner. It's so tacky. It's so cheesy. And then there are some makeup artists that love it. I love it. You have to just use the lip liner the right way. I don't overline the entire lip. I like to overline a little bit by my cupid's bow right in here. And what it does, it just gives you that nice lift. It like gives you a little plumper lip. And I'm not a huge fan of injections for the lips. Everyone in LA has lip injections. And I just, but I do like bigger lips. So that's why I, I like using a lip liner. I just think it's so underrated. Well, you were saying then that, that there was a real reaction to lip liners. I think it was left over from the 90s where you used to have that really obvious brown lip liner that was super fashionable. But yeah. I think, as, and it's again, nice. I was not a fan of lip liners for years. But as you get older, if you lose the definition of the outer side of your lip here and you don't want fillers, just a really lovely, soft lip liner that is the same color as your natural lips will just define it and keep any color you put in place so it doesn't smush out there's a real art to a really good lip liner there really is it really is it, it, it makes it makes a difference and sometimes i i because i'm not someone who likes very kind of sticky glossy lips mm -hmm. i like a semi-matte is my favorite i don't like when it's too dry because you remember the whole trend was like the the uh, what is it called? The liquid lipsticks when they dry and they look, oh God, I just never understood that trend. So I like, you know, I like them to be a bit creamy. So they look creamy, but not too shimmery, not too shiny. So there's like a very fine line to them. Is that a little bit of a hint of what we can expect from your lip products? Yes. <laughs> so you're going to do, did you say six shades next year? Yeah. And that's something, um, I would like to touch base on as well. 
working as a makeup artist, getting every launch possible ever sent to me, you know, so I really see what other brands are doing as well. And, 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 and no one really touches on the sustainability very often. And I think right now, for me, as, as a brand, it's a really big goal to, to produce products that are being used and not just overly produced just because I'm coming out with products and also not to be overwhelmed. That's another thing I learned from the everyday woman is, you know, when you go to a counter and you see a lipstick and there's 10 reds, how do you choose the right red? So I want to make it very curated for you, very kind of, you know, uh, so you just go and you're like, oh, there's six colors. I can actually find a color that matches me, you know? So that's sort of like my goal for the future of everything I bring out, not too overly produced, um, make the right decisions on the shades as well. I think sustainability is going to be such a big movement over. I mean, I think it certainly happened in the last year and a half since we've been in lockdown. But I think moving forward to 2022, sustainability is going to be one of the top three goals of any brand launching yeah. now. Repackage, recycle, reuse. I mean, it just yeah. really is. So, yeah, I, I mean, think it's a you really know, good sometimes idea. I'm just mind boggled by like certain brands when I get a new range of lipsticks. I'm like, really, did you really have to come out with? 40 lipstick colors and like everyone looks the same like I don't I'm overwhelmed by it and I'm a makeup artist like I don't even know how you would feel so that is sort of like the inspiration behind it uh less is more I think with everything in life you don't need to have so much I agree with you completely I think I think we're in a unique position in that we get sent so much but I always think if you're launching something What's unique about it? What's special about it? If, it? if it's already available out there, don't relaunch it. We don't need more. We need different and we need better and we need improved and we need streamlined. And that's why when you launch Blonder Cover to bring us back full circle, it really is a unique product. I hadn't seen it before. And so that's why I wanted to interview you because if it was a foundation stick, I'd say, well, there are foundation sticks, but this particular texture in this pot really is unique and interesting and again i urge you if you are tempted go over you can get color match you can dm the team but go on and watch monica use this product on all different women of all different ages and you'll see the way she preps the skin and blends it out and as i said when i interviewed kay montano and ruby hammer they were both going crazy for your product they love it and that that's they're the hardest people in the world to impress they will so you know nadine in general again i'm european like you and i live here in in, in the states and what i notice with american women is you know they they like to be a bit more done like everything done mm -hmm. and i think the difference between you and me or being european is that we we wear less of makeup you know like you could wear like a red lip and nothing else and you you find to leave the house and here everything is more done so my my inspiration also with blender cover was really to create a product that is very skin like and 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 i personally hate when i look at someone and and i see too much foundation you know and especially on younger people who have perfect skin and they're just like covered with foundation so my goal was to really create something that really works and, and that looks super natural and very skin-like. Yeah, no, I, and I really think you've achieved it. You really have. Linda, if you're still watching. Someone is making I'm... fun of my turtleneck. I keep reading it. They're like, why is she in this turtleneck? Because you're in LA, that's why. Okay, here I am. <laughs> if, you guys would know, in a if you guys would know how cold it is in my house right now, you have no idea. I had the fire going. LA doesn't get cold at all. It is so cold since one week here. My my toes right now, I wish I would have socks on. I'm freezing. <laughs> it's surprisingly mild here in London. Honestly, I went out in the jumper earlier on and I thought, I'm a bit hot. I'm going to put a t-shirt on. So uh, just for everybody that was asking, thank you, Linda. So Undercover Face Cream launches in January. I will tag it now, but it's not going to be available until January. So have we done all of your products? I think we have. Good. We have done everything. It's okay. so fun to talk with you because... I, I do have just... one final question. Seeing yeah. as you're working on um, a mascara, what do you want from your mascara? Ooh, it's the mascara is just... Oh my God, I'm so... 
I'm so tempted to, to, what I want from a mascara is I want, you know, darkness. I want a nice curl, obviously no clumping. I want, I want it to be buildable. I don't want a mascara where I put it on and immediately I have this effect. I want it to be, because as makeup artists, we do three, four, five coats. We never, and that's the thing, I think the difference between a makeup artist and again, you, the everyday woman who wants everything right away, right? You put the mascara on and then you want this effect. So we take our time and we really layer products. So I want my mascara to be, you know, buildable and uh, that you can, again, do certain, you can do a natural look with it if you want to during the day, if you're just wearing a t-shirt and not wearing makeup, or you can at night really build it up to something really nice and, and heavy. It's really interesting. And I'm sure you've already found the person that supplied it. I genuinely, in all my years as a, as a, a beauty editor, I've only ever found one mascara that genuinely you could apply and then you could go back two hours later and apply Which it Which one? And it was Benefit, Bad Girl Bang. Wow, Benefit, so okay. Find out, find out who supplies the Benefit uh, mascaras because I do genuinely believe that their mascaras are quite unique in their formulation. And everybody will join in now and help you and tell you and they'll say, no, I found what I found. I, and also the brush, the, Nadine, the, the brush is, the, I think, really, really important, what people don't really talk about, because I think it's such a personable thing. And, and honestly, that's the biggest question I get as a makeup artist. Every woman always asks me, what is your favorite mascara? And I generally think that it's a very personal thing, because mascara is mascara at the end of the day, but it really is, a lot of it has to do with the brush. I personally don't like a big, thick brush but most people do. I like them to be thinner because when it's thinner, I can really get into control. the little corners and I can control it more. Those thick ones, but those are the ones which are the biggest selling mascaras. See, the this, number is, one. This, this is the hard thing for you is, is are you creating for you and makeup artists or are you creating for me? Because women yeah. like me want a big brush, a single coat and we're out. And we probably are not ever going to try and reapply our mascara yeah. maybe in the yeah. evening. But do you know what the, the number one? Do you know what the number one selling mascara is ever in no. in, in the world? You don't. No. It's Too Faced better than sex. Really? So that's yeah. a classic single coat, huge chunky brush. See. Massive I don't, triple lash. It's not yeah. my mascara. It's no. it's not what I would choose to use no. Uh, no. on my clients. But that is the biggest selling mascara ever. Yeah. It's very interesting. Go and look at some of the benefit ones because I do think they have quite small, they have smaller brushes and they have rubber brushes. But I think it's about educating somebody to s take more time with their mascara, have control over their mascara to, to the tiniest lashes on the inside and the outer and to demand more from your mascara that you can build it as many coats as you want. If you make that, it'll be the gold standard. Okay, I'm going to look into that. That's such a great tip. I love it. <laughs> All right, and when you come over to London, let's We're see going... each other. We'll go out with Linda. With we'll Linda. To celebrate. Linda, you're watching. We're all going for cocktails. <laughs> as, soon, as soon as this mess over here is over. So oh, hopefully I'm... in the spring, yes? Yes, I'm so over this. I'm over it. I'm coming to London. <laughs> Everybody's over it, Monica. We're all on the same page there. Thank oh, you we so should much. Also, we should also meet up with, uh, with I love the two girls, p the Pixie Woo girls. Oh, um, Sam and Nick Chapman. Yeah, we should meet with them too. Right. That's a date. I know Sam and Nick Chapman really well. In the spring, we should all get together, inc including you, Linda Land. Yes. Yes, we will do that. This was so fun. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It was super early in the morning for you. So thank you. Of course, everybody asking, I'm going to save this. I'm going to list every single product below now. And I'm going to give you the links where you can get color matched, both on Cult Beauty and MonicaBlunder.com. Thank you so much, Monica. Sending you so many kisses and hugs. Happy Christmas. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>